guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly vlog. I have had this idea for a while um, and thought that now is the time to do it. It's no better the time than the present. Um, I really enjoy doing themed vlogs, watching them and the few that I've done I've really liked. So I thought what better way to kick off some books from my TBR that I knew. I need to get to than to do a themed video. So this week I will be reading emotional books. Um, though one of them is more so like mystery so I'm wondering how how emotional it really is. I haven't heard a whole lot about it, so we shall see. But in my head, it's going to be kind of emotional, so I'm excited for it. Right now, I have three books on my TBR for the week. If I do well and finish all three of them, I have other emotional books on my TBR. Um, but if I only get to those three, maybe I could do another video like this at some point. So anyways, I'm just going to get into the TBR for the week. The first book I have took the world by storm last year and I can't believe I've had it on my TBR for so long but you know life just happens sometimes. I'm a big mood reader and if I'm not in the mood for the books if I read them when I'm not in the mood it affects my rating and affects how I feel about them. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I was in the right time like right mood for these so that they got the best shot possible um but that is the extraordinary deaths of mrs kip by sarah brunsvold this um is about a lady who is dying and someone writes her like she writes a story on her or something like that so gonna read this one the next one I have is What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson. This is a book about a podcaster and she's telling the story about her friend who like went missing or something like that. I don't actually know what it's about now. I remember reading, reading the synopsis for it um, and thinking it sounded very interesting but it's been a while and I like to not really know what is happening in the story when I read it so I'm not gonna really dive super deep into that one and then the last one is The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese this is book one in her new series The Fog Harbor series and this one is a romance these two are not but this one will have some romance in it but I know that it'll be emotional in itself of just real life because Nicole is fabulous at that so I'm very excited these are the three books that I will be reading this week and you will come with me through all the emotions sad depressing happy anxious any of the emotions these books make me feel we're gonna experience them together so that's the plan I have today off because it is Labor Day and then I also have a Friday off this week because that is my normal day off during the week so We've got some good time to get some books done and if I'm really enjoying them and I don't have anything planned typically I can get through at least a book a day so we shall see but yeah that is the plan for this week come along with me as I read these emotional books okay I just read you the backs of the books and you picked what happens next to be my first read? Can you explain your thought process? No paparazzi. <laughs> and it's so good. <laughs> what was your thought process? There was none. Okay. Just feels. Good. All right. This is the first book. This is what it's about for the people who like to read synopses. All right. 
friends. First item of business for today. My dad is currently making us a late breakfast brunch. Pancakes. I'm all about pancakes. Um, but first order of business for today is to clean my room. It is a bit of a mess. A bunch of clean clothes on my bed and just like little miscellaneous things. Books where they don't need to be. Laundry on my floor that I need to put in the washer. Um, so that's going to be the first order of business for today. Hello, son. And then um, getting dressed and getting the rest of my day started. I am the type of person, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I am more productive at home, like when I'm cleaning and doing stuff, when I am still in my pajamas. <laughs> If I'm in my clothes for some reason, like I, I normally will like want to be out of the house doing something and I just, I hate the feeling of cleaning and picking up when I'm in my clothes. But if I'm in my pajamas, I like, I can book it. I can do things. I'm super productive. So, but I also know people who they have to get up and get dressed and start their day before they're productive that way, like cleaning and stuff. Now. If I'm leaving my house, if I have things to do, I'm more productive if I get up and get dressed because it sets me in the mindset to like get out of the house. But if I'm just cleaning and moving around the house, normally in my pajamas. Not very 50s housewife of me, but not in the 50s nor my housewife. So, um, yeah, that's a little look into my psyche. But I would love to know, are you more productive around your house when you're completely dressed and ready for the day or if you have your pajamas on. Love to know. Alrighty, I'm going to tackle this mess and I will see you guys in a little bit when I get some time to actually start what happens next. guys it is about six o'clock and I wanted to do my first update on what happens next I didn't start reading until maybe five ish and I'm about 80 pages in my day got super busy we just did some family stuff my sister made the best cookie we tried a new chocolate chip cookie recipe because we were getting real tired of our other one um, and they're amazing she wants me to show them to you, so I will in just a second. But I ran some errands, and then I came home, and we played a game, ate some lunch, uh, and then I've been reading for a bit. And so again, I'm about 80 pages into this. 13 chapters, I think? Let me see. Yeah, 13 chapters in. And I'm really enjoying it. Ariana did a great job picking my first one because this was like low on my list of the three. But I'm really glad I started with this one. It is about a girl who went missing in 1987. <laughs> it's about a girl who went missing in 1987 and her friend from that summer all these years later has started a podcast and the girl's family who went missing had just the mother has not moved on but everybody else is like trying to live life um, and just the grief that goes with that and then the main character who has the podcast is had just has just gone through a divorce and she has two kids and just kind of going through the grief of being in her late 40s and essentially having to start life over again while her husband is remarrying and taking the girls away for a summer. So she agrees to do and look into this case and do a podcast on Heather's case. Um, and she just went and like got back into the town. And so it's gonna bring up a lot of memories for her, I'm sure, and the family. And it's 
three perspectives. So it's Faith's perspective in present day, Dora's, you guys saw, Dora who is the mom, her perspective present day and the grief she's going through, and then Heather's perspective from it looks like the summer of 1987 when she did in fact get, um, or when she went missing. So it's got a mystery element to it, suspense element to it, but also just the grief um, of the life changes and watching other people move on when you just can't. Definitely going to be emotional. Very good, very good pick. But I'm taking a little hiatus to show you the cookies that my sister made and then we're going to watch Finding Nemo and then I will probably pick up and read some more of what happens next. So I'm going to show you the cookies real fast. Take the lid off. Dun, 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 dun. Mom's broken. Mom's broken. Look at that. Here. Yum, yum, yum. Look how pretty they are. They crack so well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. salt. Look at that. Look, Look at, at that. that. Ah, kind of so pretty. And then we have some without sea salt for my dad and brother. To put a little sea salt on top. Good job. Um, no creds to me. All creds to some girl on Instagram and TikTok. I am in Bloom Bakery or something like that. <laughs> Some girl on Instagram. No creds to me, all creds to her. So, finding Nemo time. And then it was stuck. It wouldn't pull up oh. our account. We'll make it work. And then back to what happens next. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, it is Tuesday evening. I just got home from work. Uh, I wanted to update you last night, but my camera died in the middle of me talking. So, uh, you're just getting an update now. I finished what happens next last night around like 1245-ish. Y'all, seriously, this book was really outside of my normal read my normal pickup. I am a romance or bust kind of gal. There was a very, 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 very thin line of romance um, that honestly when it popped up, I was a little like, oh, like <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. But I still loved it. It made sense to the story and the characters and it was sweet. And it was like a rekindled little kid situation that like now they're adults but they like knew each other from that summer and it was really sweet and he became a really good friend and help to her in the modern day timeline when she was searching for what happened to Heather. Oh, this book, I didn't cry um, but definitely at the end I definitely did get a little teary eyed just because of the forgiveness and the hope and the healing it was just beautiful. It really was. It was such a beautiful read, even though it was tragic. Um, but it just felt real. Like, I really felt each emotion that these characters were feeling of the... I mean, obviously, I can't put myself in the shoes of someone who's lost a child. Um, but I felt the grief that Dora was feeling and that the family was feeling and then that Faith was feeling. But I also love that we got Heather's perspective like from the summer that she disappeared. And you know we're seeing kind of a mixture of everything but still really kept in the dark for most of it because we don't even know what happens until right at the end when pretty much everybody else finds out what happens to Heather. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, because I think that if I knew what happened to Heather at the beginning and then I was watching everybody grieve, it would have been hard for me to not necessarily relate 
to the characters but ha maybe have a hard time like connecting because I know the like the ending but even though you can kind of gather some things because she's been missing for almost 40 years um just like what happened was written really well into the story kind of explaining things and just time going past and bringing new eyes to it and just the, again the hope all of it it was so good again very glad I started my week off with this because it was like on the lower side of the three that I wanted to read I wasn't a hundred percent sure but I'm glad that I read it absolutely loved it rated it five out of five stars and I highly suggest it I was telling my mom all about it last night um, I'm trying to get her to read it even though I pretty much told her the whole plot like <laughs> spoiled the whole thing but I think that she would really enjoy it so I'm gonna try to have her read it um, I will say this deals with a lot a lot of grief um, missing child uh, divorce um, I wouldn't say abusive parents but not wonderful parents and just childhood trauma type things um, so and I wouldn't categorize this as suspense in any way um, but I was definitely like on the edge of my seat so I would say it had a good like it pulled me in you know it reeled me and it had me invested um, but I don't think it was like spooky or suspenseful in the way that I felt like they were looking for a murderer type thing if that makes sense so highly highly recommend next I am between either Nicole Deese's book or Sarah Brunsfold so I am gonna see if my brother wants to pick for me so let's go okay brother I need you to pick so I've got the words we never the words we lost or the extraordinary deaths of Miss Kip would you like me to read the backs of them to you? Yes. Okay. This one? Yeah. Alright. Do you have any reasons for this or just feels? <laughs> this was the angle I got of Ariana. Do you have reasons for picking this one? I had just woken up. She looked rough. Or just feels. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a reason or just feels? Vibes. I hate that word. <laughs> well, now I'm curious, so I'll turn it off. <laughs> Want a grape? All right. <laughs> so Austin chose The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip by Sarah Brunswald, and he said that his reason was the two sentences that are on the back of the art kind of reminded him a little bit of the plot of fried green tomatoes um which once he said that totally makes sense <laughs> give me a second let me finish talking <laughs> um where it's a like young person hearing the stories of an older person's life before they die um so i'm excited i've heard nothing but amazing things about this so this will be my start tonight and then we'll see how long it takes me to get through this and then that means the words we lost will be the one that i read after so the extraordinary death of Mrs. Kip. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. I've eaten paper multiple times. <laughs> but that candy, you know the candy dots on the paper? Oh yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my baking channel. Today I'm baking blueberry muffins. She's never made blueberry muffins never. before. And it's from scratch. No box mix. Oh, I don't know if I should open it or keep it covered. Keep it closed. Okay. You got 40 minutes left on your timer. Oh, still. And she's watching The Parent Trap. I show you. A am. classic. The I Lindsay Lohan am. version because hot take. It's the only version. E it's I don't like the original. But it tastes really good. I don't know if I put enough blueberries in there because I didn't measure them. I just measured it with my heart. As one but does. But you put more on top. And then you put, before you put them in the oven... This was really expensive. <laughs> Turb say that. <gasps> Sorry. Say that word. Turbinaro? Sure. No, that's a that's a D. I don't know. Turbinado? Sure. Right. Turbinado? Uh, I know. And I hope this is what it said turbinado sugar, but it said brown sugar. And this says cane sugar. Mm, but that looks brown. Yeah. And also they didn't have any other choices. So this is supposed to be on the top cool. when they get baked with nice. the blueberries. 
Ooh. Smell, smell that. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hopefully it makes nice. I don't know. I'm excited though. If it's a good mix, I'm excited for chocolate chip muffins too. Yeah, I'm those gonna are my try favorite. chocolate chip. And I did white, pink, and blue and yellow. Cute. Yeah. Love it. She's and a baker. This is her baking week. My she baking baked twice. is done. Except I can't bake tomorrow night or Thursday or Friday or Saturday. Yeah, well. So, this is kind of it. Until Ooh. next week. What? You want me to get footage of you singing on Friday night at the hyphen rally? I can get it on my phone. For your blog? <laughs> sure, if you want. I just sure. might. We'll see. Yeah, just do it. Okay, just, just do, do it, it. So I can hear how bad it sounds. No. <laughs>about 9 45 and I'm just sitting down to read it's been a very busy day I worked um, and actually was there for a while because I had a meeting and then my dad and I went to the gym when I got home we were there for a while then we ran some errands and then we came home and showered and had dinner and then hung out with the family so getting a late start on the reading and I do have to work tomorrow But I do want to get a couple chapters in of The Extraordinary Death of Mrs. Kip. I don't want to stay up super, super late tonight. Um, so I've already washed my face and put my retainer in. So I will be ready that once I'm tired and ready to go, I will be knocked out. So I'm going to try. My goal is to read about five chapters of this to start with. And then I will probably read the rest tomorrow night. Um, I do have a FaceTime call with my besties tomorrow evening, um, but I'm off on Friday, so I'll be able to stay up and read tomorrow evening, but for now, let's just go ahead and get a couple of chapters in to The Extraordinary Death of the Skip. Guys, I, I think I'm going to do something that I never do stop the presses but this is an art copy um and I do have a finished copy that I got at FRS and I got it signed because I met Sarah Brunswald but I've heard such amazing things about this book and I've already read a scene um that was just really sweet so I think I'm gonna annotate this <laughs> who am I but these pens right here Ooh, sorry hold on backlit these pens right here, literally the best. I'm left-handed, um, and they don't smear, they don't smudge, they're fabulous. So I think I'm gonna do this light blue color that you cannot see because of the light. This light blue color. I'm gonna annotate this arc. I don't know who I am. I probably won't make this a consistent thing, um, but I want to see what it feels like. So, yeah, let's do it. so I just got to chapter six so I read five chapters I'm like 60 pages into the book it's about 10 30 so I'm gonna hit the hay so I have to work tomorrow I'm unsure how I'm feeling about the book 
so we shall see um I know there has to be growth for Aiden like it makes sense but right now her character is a little annoying because <laughs> like it makes sense why she was talked down to at work and got in trouble but I'm really excited to see how Clara's stories change her perspective so I'm excited intrigued to keep reading it and hopefully finish it tomorrow so and I have underlined a couple things um and I'm excited to see like the wisdom from Mrs. Kip and just see her interactions with people um so yeah that's that I'll see you guys tomorrow good night hello I wanted to do a quick update um it's about 12 30 on Thursday night and I had my FaceTime call with two of my best friends. That went on for a little bit. And then honestly, I just sat on my phone for a while and scrolled on Instagram and sent reels back and forth to my siblings. So um, around 11, I decided to pick up this. And I got another like five chapters in so I'm on chapter 11 123 pages in it's fine um I'm not like hating like I don't hate it but I'm not loving it either like it's I told my brother it it isn't capturing my attention like what happens next um unfortunately like, right now I'm just kind of at the point where I just don't I'm not really connecting with either of any of the characters. Um, but I know it has potential and like I'm enjoying it. I know that it is going to be touching and heartfelt because I enjoy a lot of the things that Mrs. Kip has already said. Like again, I, I am beating this poor arc up. Like literally I've spent the time, I can't believe I'm doing this, it feels wrong. But I'm literally bending the book and reading it like this. Um, but like, you can't really see them because of the light blue I used. But I've had like a couple annotations and like underline of things that I've enjoyed. Um, so I am liking it. That's, I'm not, I, I'm enjoying the story. But I'm having a hard time having the motivation to pick it up and actually read it. Like spend my time reading it if that makes sense I could 100% see this as a movie I would love to watch this play out like that it really does kind of give me a little bit of fried green tomatoes vibes especially with the time jump um because you're seeing Clara's story back and forth like from her perspective from the 60s and the 70s and if it goes further um because the story is based in 2016 so like the modern day so we're jumping a little bit which is fine which is cool i'm liking to actually see what's happening but i it just feels like it's moving really 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 slow um and aiden's character is just young <laughs> and that's odd saying because she's her character's 22 so she's only two years younger than i am but i just I'm not connecting with her character so to me her character is just coming off a little young and immature and again they make a comment that it's just like ha having an ego like as a young kid and like it makes sense 100% um so I'm not faulting her for that but I'm struggling to connect with her character because I I don't want to say it wasn't like that because I'm sure at some point I was. Um, every, I feel like every 20 year old thinks that they know what they're doing and they know the answers and they are the big shot and they're not. Um, but I feel like I learned that lesson quicker than, than some. Um, I don't know. I'm just having a hard time connecting with their character. It's what it's really boiling down to. So it's late. 
I am probably going to watch a movie, even though it is 1230, I'll probably fall asleep. So I'm going to get ready for bed, wash my face, brush my teeth, do all the things. Um, but I have some running around to do tomorrow. I've got a lot of things on the books, so we shall see if I finish this. Um, the thing is, I know that I need to push through and finish this because if I don't, if I set it down, I will not pick it back up. Um, I'm just at that point in the story right now where I'm just kind of struggling with it. So tomorrow's plan is to get up and get out of the house. I need to run a couple errands, um, get a couple things because tomorrow evening we have a church service. Very excited for um, my sister will be on the praise team and I'm just really excited to hear the preacher who's going to be there. Um, so that is tomorrow evening. But in the meantime of that, I also have to edit some videos and this week just flew by. I don't know where it went. Um, but I have to edit some videos and there's something else that's on my list. I got a couple things I got to do tomorrow. So reading might not necessarily be the biggest priority but I definitely do want to because again I've got to power through this book is not super super long and I'm 123 pages into it right now so I just I know I have a feeling like once I get into it I'm really going to enjoy it once the story starts moving and I feel like we're slowly progressing there um but this first 123 pages I'm not gonna lie was difficult for me to get into so yeah that's those are my thoughts um that's just gonna be how it is so I'm gonna go brush my teeth wash my face get ready for bed and probably turn on a movie um yeah it's been Thursday's a really long days for me um because it's technically like my end of the week at work. Uh, I have Fridays off and I work on Saturdays. So it's like the week really kind of hits hits me. And I work a long shift on Thursdays. And today was just one of those days. So I'm very tired. <sighs> and I think too another reason I'm struggling is I just don't have the mental capacity this week. Um so we shall see i feel like this video is kind of a fail to read emotional books and what matters next was emotional but like this was the book that like really want like this was the one that i was like i'm gonna do a whole week around reading emotional books i'm gonna read this book because everybody says it was super emotional and i'm just not really connecting with the characters but again i have a feeling the emotional part is probably towards the end because Mrs. Kip is dying. Um, but we did just get to the revelation of what her, what Aiden's editor is doing. And it's actually really sweet. So her editor is very kind. Um, and I really am loving how openly Christian the book is. And how much it is talking about God. And just like how it's so, Clara's prayers are just so simple and yet so human and just such a relationship of like show me who they are like show me who they truly are how do I reach them because that's one thing about Christianity that's one thing about witnessing and reaching people is it's not one size fits all at all <laughs> you have to find people where they are and in a way that they are going to be receptive to the truth and God's words and just his love in general um, and truly having his eyes to see people in that way is something that I feel like we just kind of breeze by just assuming that it is a one size fits all. At least sometimes I know that I'm like that. Um, so just kind of the reminder that every person is different and we need grace in every moment and in every interaction because we don't know what they're going through. We don't know their life. Um, but taking the time to actually listen and to not just look but to see who they are um so I am getting things out of it I promise <laughs> it's thought provoking for sure and I think that's why it's a little slower for me right now because I'm really like thinking and like 
wow, these are great things. And I'm, again, I'm underlining, underlining some things. So that's taking a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a slower read for me. But I'll get through it. Definitely. All right. I might dip out of the movie. I'm like over here talking. I can't keep my eyes open. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alrighty. Well, I am going to hit it. Um, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night. Alright friends, it is Friday night. I am about to head out and go to the church service that I was talking about. Um, if I have a lisp, I'm sorry. I have teeth whitening strips and then I'm going to take out right when I get there. Um, but I am dressed for the evening. I just have flats on, but I will slip into some heels when I get there. So I'll try to get a picture um, and insert it so that you can see what the outfit looked like. Love how it turned out. Super cute. It's a new dress. Um, and then a picture with me and my siblings. Because we all are in like coordinating-ish outfits. Struggling to focus on me. There we go. Um, my sister is singing tonight. She is on the praise team. So I'm super excited for her. Um, but also just there to worship and be in church. And I'm really excited. And then, yeah. I did a ton of running. I got up way later than I wanted to today. Did not get out of the house until after 11. And then was out running errands and spent way too much money on things that I don't need but that's okay um my love language is gift giving <laughs> so I bought a ton of gifts for my coworkers. I'm really excited to give them to all of them and then we got home and I was just putting stuff away and cleaning up and then started getting ready so yeah no reading has been done today but that's okay I'm gonna try we'll see what time I get home tonight from the service because normally we're there for a while um I'm going to try to read tonight. If not, we'll see if I read tomorrow afternoon or evening after work. So, all right. I'll see you guys later. Hey, friends. It's midnight. Um, my brother and I just got home from our church service, and then we went out to dinner with a friend. Um, so, no reading done today. But I am going to wash my face, take my contacts out, brush my teeth, and go to bed because I am exhausted and I do have to work tomorrow. It was a wonderful, wonderful service. I wasn't able to get a clip of my sister um, singing because it was just a great service and I didn't have my phone out. Um, but she did amazing. The praise team did amazing. The sermon was amazing. Definitely Lord's timing, that's for sure. Um, so, yes, it was wonderful. And now I am trained. So I am gonna go ahead and go to bed. And I will catch you guys tomorrow when I am going to try my hardest to finish The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip. That's my goal. Hey guys, it's Saturday evening. Um, it is about 9.45 now. I just got off my phone call with Catherine and Hannah. We had a wonderful time. But we were on our FaceTime for like three hours. But when I tell you, I'm just incredibly thankful for the community that is the book world and the people that I've met through Instagram and the friends that I've made. God really does answer the prayers even if it seems like it's so many years later because when I tell you young Alicia, that poor girl, she just wanted friends and you know she struggled for many many years and the cries and the prayers that the Lord heard from me for many years he answers his prayers and like I've seen this thing going around Instagram like if you look at your life like you were living like a prayer that you prayed so many years ago or like a dream that you've dreamt so many years ago and it's like it's so true like really like this is this is a prayer that I prayed for so many years and here I am living it so I try never to take it for granted because I'm so incredibly grateful um but all that to say I didn't read anything today it was a very busy day I worked and then when I got off work I met my dad at the church and we were there until three almost four and then I came home and I helped my brother get ready for a church service that he went to. And then um, 
oh i took the dog for like a walk for almost an hour it popped in a podcast your favorite auntie's podcast when i tell you i'm not a big podcast person but that one is my absolute favorite now so good um came home jumped in the shower and then got on my call so i really haven't had any time to read but my goal I'm 120 pages in, right? Okay. I was like 350 pages. Yeah, 360. So it was 240. My goal is to try to finish this book. Tonight. We'll see. I'm going to try to read as much as I can. Um, and see if I can like really get into it. So I'm just going to buckle up and read for a bit so I'll check in with you guys in a bit Let's chat, shall we? Oh. First, I would like to say I did not cry. I got close. My eyes definitely got teary. Um, but man, I feel like I've been through a roller coaster. Never have I been so thankful that I kept at the book um, this was beautifully done um, I, like I'm, I'm speechless in the way of like I just don't know what to say it's typically what speeches means I just really don't really like have thoughts to put into words that is a touching book extraordinary the messages and the reminders and just the the hope and the selflessness and at the end of the day, just the true love, God's love, that was written in those pages. Like, I just, 
I told my mom she has to read this. It absolutely 100% gives me slight Christian fried green tomatoes. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a good one. Um, but I told my mom I will steal her phone and throw it away and I will force her to sit down and read this book because I think that she would absolutely love it. It will make her cry 100%. Um, but something I'm gonna have her do because I annotated like throughout the story just things that like caught my attention made my heart feel good I think that's another reason why it took me so long to get through the book because I was truly soaking up all of it because it really was a I don't want to say hard read but it was a thoughtful read um and just really made me like sit back and like really think like man I want to be like Mrs. Kip like it was convicting in that way truly um but I want to have my mom when she reads it I want her to annotate it too um in a different color because I did light blue and then I'm going to keep this um just as a reminder and then also have my mom's annotations I think it'll just be an extra special book um yeah it was good like I don't even know how to rate it honestly and like it was it was rough for me to get into I'm not gonna lie like the first 120 pages I I know I've, I talked about it with you guys this week like to the point that it kind of was putting me into a reading slump or like I didn't want to read and I just was making up literally any other excuse than reading because I just wasn't invested in the story but then I don't I don't know what pay I like sat down and I told myself tonight I was like Alicia you're gonna read to page 200 like if you can get there just read 70 more pages 80 more pages like I'll be happy and then I can work out the rest later it's like page 130 ish 135 something broke and it's like the story truly started unfolding and I was literally like I was gone I was just going 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 like noise wasn't bothering me like the only thing that was bothering me was the fact that people were coming like talking to me and I was like I just, I, I'm reading like I'm doing something right now so this week um was just truly timed right by God. The, and this, this is where I want to get emotional. Um, see, I'm an emotional person, I promise. Just not when I read. Um, Uh, I've been struggling the last couple weeks just with stupid stuff. Um, but just with like different convictions on top of uh, just being tired and overwhelmed and just some personal feelings. <laughs> and you ever feel like you hit the wall and you just need a good cry? kind of get into that point um so I was hoping that reading emotional books would help me get to my good cry phase so I could be over and done with it but the message at church last night was perfectly timed um talking about the remedy is in your rejoicing the remedy for fear and doubt and you know depression and anxiety and those things because we're not like the spirit of fear is not of the Lord like we're not called to have that it's not his plan or his desire for his people to be in a state of anxiety or depression or fear or doubt and I'm not saying those things aren't valid I'm not saying that there aren't some that you know like you can't just pray those things away and I understand and that's what I'm trying to say so please don't 
please don't twist what I'm saying but at the end of the day it is still not God's will for his people to feel those things um, and when you are rejoicing when you are praising and opening your mouth and speaking and praising God you literally are taking off the cloak of heaviness you are literally you have to shed that you have to because you can't praise God and be worrying about your problems at the same time like it's, it's just not possible and there are scriptures to back that up um, and and that's what the message was and it was so perfectly timed because I was so in the molly grubs and just like woe is me I need a good cry and it's like this is just life and life staying like you know life does stink but it, it was I was so focused on the physical and I got to the point that my like my gaze wasn't fixed where it needed to be it wasn't fixed on the spiritual and the heavenly to where if I had just praised my way through it or lifted my hands or just cried out to God and not focus so molly grub woe is me it would have been a much easier week <laughs> it was just a great reminder um and I had my good cry I did but it was weeping while rejoicing it was weeping for being in the goodness of God and for his reminders um and my focus completely shifted and honestly I think that's why I was able to get so much more out of this because there's I think I've talked about it on this vlog if not talked about it on my Instagram there's a podcast called your favorite auntie's podcast and literally my new obsession um but even think like I spent my whole day just saturating myself with good godly content with my music and my I was listening to the podcast and the books that I was reading and just truly the joy and the lightness that's not the right word but that I felt this whole day unmatched and it really just goes to show you what you put in here and through here and through here really affects you here 100% um, but I think I just got so much more because it was so perfectly timed um, and God doesn't make mistakes and he cares about the little things and he uses whatever he needs to use to get a hold of his people um, so yeah that's how I'm feeling. It was an emotional week, guys. <laughs> um, I still don't know where I'm sitting on a rating just because it did take me so long to get into it. Um, and it just, it feels like rating it is wrong. Like, if you've ever read a, like, a biography type thing I always feel like rating nonfiction is wrong because like that's somebody's life experience and I know this is a work of fiction it is 100 percent um but also not because it was truth and it was reminders and I'm sure if we just took some time to really see people and talk to people and learn their life experiences we would we would find Mrs. Kipps in this world I want to be a Mrs. Gibb. Um, so, I understand why it took the world by storm. Truly. So, yeah. It is late. Um, let's see. It is 1.30. I should probably get ready for bed because uh, we have church in the morning but I am going to go ahead and end the vlog here um, it has been a long week but a good week and I read two really good books and I'm very proud of myself I wish I had been able to get to all three um, 
but that's all right. I'm not going to beat myself up over it because I read two amazing books. What Happens Next and The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kipp. Had a full week running errands and doing things. And not only was this a themed vlog, but honestly it was probably a more realistic reading vlog for me um, of what I read in a week. My reading has diminished exponentially, but that's all right. That's all right. It's a season of life and that's okay. Um, but I had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you want to see me do it again, let me know. If you want to see some other themed vlogs, I have a couple in mind that I would love to do. Um, but I could 100% do emotional books again since I still have some on my bookshelf. Um, so, yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm ready to get back into my rom-coms. Need something a little, little lighter. But I also don't want to lose momentum or lose focus again. And I really do want to take some time soon and, like, only read and only saturate myself with Christian content, um, Christian music, Christian podcasts, Christian, Christian, um, like listening to sermons, only Christian fiction, like really focusing and getting, getting back where I need to be so I don't relapse and forget that my remedy is in rejoicing and so that I could be a modern day Mrs. Kip. And the only way to do that is to be so focused on God and like just the readily having just a conversation, just being so open. Ugh. It was good. It was very good. So that's that. I'm going to end the vlog here. It's going to be a very long video. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> You haven't had content from me in weeks and here you go it's like probably gonna be an hour and a half to two hours so whatever it's a full feature film you're welcome get some popcorn put me on two speed if you need to um but definitely let me know if you've read the extraordinary deaths of mrs kip if you have um what's a piece of advice you gleaned from it if you haven't what's a book that really convicted you and like changed your mindset or made you just stop and think I would love to know in the comments below um, yeah don't forget you can check out my blog at for the love of Christian fiction dot .com. you can also check out my Instagram for the love of Christian fiction I'll make the links in the description box below I can't speak that's it <laughs> I think that's it I'll see you guys next time bye